Bookcase and Coffee presents Buzzing About Romance, A Quick Shot of Romance. On this episode of A Quick Shot of Romance, we are reviewing Mind to Guard by Kennedy Mitchell. It is book three of her protection series. Joining me this evening is Rachel. You can find her on Instagram as Read with Rach, and she's my sister in suspense. Welcome back to the podcast, Rachel. Thanks for having me. Can't wait to talk about this one. Do you want to do the synopsis? Yeah. All right. From Goodreads. Being ripped from her mundane life by a swarm of police officers is not what Ray Chapin expected when she woke up this morning. Accused of a series of murders she didn't commit, Ray doesn't have anyone to rely on except him, Alec Bronson, the popular boy who broke her heart all those years ago. Now a smoking hot man is her only hope of proving her innocence and finding the person eager to kill everyone she loves. It's been two decades since Texas Ranger Alec Bronson last saw Ray. He shouldn't get involved, but with one look at his childhood friend behind the steel bars and her proclamations of innocence, he's convinced to take the case. The battle to keep his renewed feelings for the curvaceous woman hidden becomes impossible when the true killer emerges once again, targeting the only woman he's ever loved. Life-altering secrets are revealed as the evidence mounts, pointing toward the killer who's determined to make Ray pay for her past. When confronted with the truth, Ray is forced to make a decision, his life or hers. If you love a little darkness, murder, and possessive alpha heroes with the need for control mixed into your suspense, then this series is for you. Please note this book is for mature readers due to detailed sexual content, foul language, discussion of abuse, and a killer who will stop at nothing. Okay, so this releases... Well, the release date on this is 4-19-2021, so it is brand new. Um, the tropes are damaged hero, damaged heroine, second chance, first love, and it's suspense. And, oh, excuse me, and has a steam level of three out of five. Now, let me preface this whole thing by saying I did not see that coming. Like the ending, like who the bad guy was. Oh, my goodness. No, I had no idea. I I definitely did not. Th- that was not even remotely in my brain. Now, I will say, because this is book three, so I read book one and book two because, of course, I had to because I can't read things out of order. You don't have to read book one and two because it just, Alec is the only recurring character and he showed up in book two. Mm-hmm. Um, they, like, overlap the hero for the, the next book. But I typically, like... When I read a suspense book, I can get little clues and I usually can figure out somewhat what's going to happen or who the bad guy is. And none, none of them, all three of them, I did not have a clue. And I love that. I love that too, because I do feel like in a lot of romantic suspense books, either it just straight out tells you and Mm -hmm. you're just kind of waiting for when it will happen and how, or there's enough clues that you figure it out. Mm -hmm. And that was not the case in any of these books. Hmm. No, like I, I, I just love that. I love that. Like this is so different than anything I have read before. So let's yes. talk. Oh, same. go ahead. Yeah. No, it's the exact same with me. I, I can't think of a series that's similar to this one. Mm-hmm. So let's talk. Oh, excuse me. A little bit about Ray. So her strength in this situation. Do you, or do you feel it's a strength or do you feel it's a weakness? Because like she shelters herself from everything and everybody because of like all these things that have happened throughout her entire life. And so she kind of just becomes this hermit almost like reclusive person who she goes to work, she comes home, she doesn't do anything else. Yeah, I, I think it definitely helped her for a long time. And then I think we saw a little bit in the book where it also became a weakness because mm-hmm. she kind of gets herself into some situations that are, you know, not the best for her because right. of her willingness to keep herself separated from everyone she mm-hmm. could even remotely care about. Right. And I, I agree. Like, I feel like she tried to do the right thing and protect the people around her by making the choices that she did, but she didn't always go about it in the right way. And especially like what happened, like, I mean, it wasn't her fault, but it was, it was her fault. (laughs) Yeah. How about like her sense of self-worth? Like she's very, very down on herself and negative. And she's, I mean, she's been 
crapped on by life like over and over again yeah I thought it was really sad because it is talked about that she had a really good like home life growing up they might Mm -hmm. not have had a bunch of money or anything like that but she did have a good home life so it's so sad to see a character like that Mm -hmm. just like everything is just piling on her and piling on until she just no longer really believes in herself yeah like I feel like her heart breaks over and over and over again like anytime she like for the longest time after the initial thing that happened I want to be pretty vague because it kind of but after the initial thing happened she was okay for a little bit like I mean, you can understand why she didn't put herself out there. And then she started to kind of come out of her shell again, started to like be in the world and then bad things happened again. And so she kind of pulled back and then things were okay. And she put herself out there and bad things happened again. So she, she just kind of shut down after that, but it's like Mm -hmm. over anytime she made the attempt to, to move past stuff is when things got bad. Yeah, I I truthfully don't know how she kept going or how she stayed in that town. Well, that's that was my thing. She was so like stuck in this town and she refused like almost refused to leave, but I almost got the feeling like she felt like if she left, then it would just make things even worse. Yeah, I got that feeling too. And I also felt that she kind of thought that she knew how to stay safe in that town. Mm -hmm. She knew the town. She had her little bungalow. It was easy. It was easier since she knew everything there was to know about the town. Like she had her, like she went here, she went here. She knew where things were. She didn't have to worry about meeting new people. It was like her safety net, like the town Mm -hmm. was her safety net, her safety net and her self seclusion almost. Yeah, I felt the same way. So how about her secret project that we find out towards the end of the book? I thought this was amazing. Like when we find out about it, Alec does not have a good reaction, which is not surprising the type of person that he is in this book. But I thought like she has been shit on literally for like a good chunk of her life. But she has taken these strides to do this for other people. And I just, I loved it. I loved it too. And it was another thing that I, I would not have guessed that that's what she was doing. When they Uh came out with the evidence, I was like, what, like, what is going on? And there were a couple hints at the beginning with, you know, I don't want to spoil anything. Snippets of like wording or like there's an object that's important and but she doesn't talk about it like she kind of just like eh, and then tries to move on but yeah there were little snippets of like things there yeah I thought I thought that was amazing to even have like the thought to help other people when you are having all of these issues uh-huh to think about someone other than yourself I feel like that would be really difficult <laughs> like right especially because Cause she's in that situation too, where like, anytime she goes out and makes a friend, like something happens. And so I question, like, I'm like, how can she put herself out there and do this when thing, these things around her are happening constantly. But I just was like, she's such a good person, like for even like attempting to make that, like those strides. Yes, I completely agree. I thought that was an amazing thing for the author to include in the story too, Mm -hmm. and how it continued through the epilogue. Yeah, yes, definitely. So let's talk a little bit about Alec. So I hated the reasoning behind him leaving when they, I mean, yes, they were in high school. Yes, like your emotions are heightened and things that are said in that people do to you and around you affect your decisions that you make. But I was so mad at him. I just wanted to smack him. I read it and I was like, you idiot. Like, come on. And I get, he was young. He was like 18 mm -hmm. and you grow up the way he did. And things just kind of probably get hammered in your head. Mm -hmm. But also especially like once you find out, like, 
what happened the day before he left. Like you can understand a little bit where his mentality is, but at the same time, like they had been best friends. Like it was what, from like third grade until they started, they became a couple in like their junior or senior year of high school. So like Mm -hmm. they have known each other for a really long time. They have been very good friends for forever, basically. And like, he never had that attitude towards her in any way. Like he was mm-hmm. always protective of her and always like did the, the found good in her. And I just, I felt so frustrated at the fact that like he really believed that what was said, he would change the way he treated her. Yeah. I agree. And it was also crazy to me that it had been two decades Mm -hmm. since he'd talked or like acknowledged that like she was anything about her. Well, that's the thing. I was like, you're a Texas Ranger. Why didn't you look her up? Like, well, and my thing is too, like in, in the 20 years since this has happened, like he hasn't gotten super close to people, but at the same time, like in 20 years, like if you were going to be the type of person that his, this other person told you were going to be like, it would have happened already. Like I just, I just was, I got very frustrated with him. I liked him, but I was very frustrated with him at the same time. I, I felt the same way, especially because it was still something he battled for most of the story. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, guy, you're like almost 40. <laughs> If this was going to happen, like, it would have yeah. happened already. Like, yeah, exactly. you have friends, his, the woman who works for him. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm like, come on. Yes. Like, he has his housekeeper who he has had for, for a long time. And he's he's never treated her with anything but, like, kindness and dignity. And it's like, but you think that this is the type of person that you're, you are. Yeah. And... I understood it at the beginning, but I feel like as he got older, he should have seen it for what it was. And that Uh was just kind of like, at that point, it's just kind of an excuse to make yourself feel better for making the wrong decision. Yes. Yes, it is. But he has this like ultimate need to do good and to, to do like, and that's why he became a Texas Ranger in the first place was to, mm-hmm. to help other people and to, to be good in some way. And I, and I like that, like he was looking out to redeem himself because he thought of himself one way. So he wanted to go the extreme in his career. Yeah. I like that too. And I also like that he chose to become a Texas Ranger rather than staying in a local police force because mm-hmm. he wanted the ultimate say to kind of have that say over maybe some dirty cops right? that he had had experience with at some point in his life. And I thought that was really um, special to note too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now his reaction to Ray's secret project was not cool not cool because he like he had been talking about how like she wasn't a bad person she wasn't like life was shouldn't be the way it is for her and he was trying to build her up and then he finds these things out and he just it's like a complete 180 and it's like what are you thinking he totally lashed out and I was like man what are you doing that was another moment where I was like, oh, you idiot. What are you doing? It was a throw the Kindle moment. It was. And I was like, this is not going to end well. It's not. But I loved, like, what but are I you loved, thinking? I love Charlie's reaction to Alex's reaction. Because he's like, you're a dumbass. Like, what I did you do? <laughs> yeah, I loved him. I like Charlie a lot, too, because he just, he does his thing. He says what he wants. Yes. and. I can't wait for Charlie's book. Like, oh, I'm very excited. It's going to be so Yeah, cool. He provided some much needed comedic relief. He did. But he, like, but there were little snippets of things like about him and in him. And I think his book is going to be very on par because she really likes that damaged hero. Like they all yeah. have a lot of issues that they're working through or issues that like they try and like keep to themselves. Like they don't make aside from like the people that they work with, they don't really have a Mm -hmm. lot of lasting relationships with anybody. Yeah. 
Yeah, I've noticed that too. Charlie's book is going to be good. I wish it was coming out like uh, next month, but well, or tomorrow. Yeah. I don't know. Unfortunately, she has to write it. So yes, <laughs> we have to wait. I'll have but to she, wait. And she writes the damaged hero, but they're all they're all very ultra alpha as well. Like very intense, very like very intense in the bedroom. Also, like oh, some of those yeah, scenes. Oh, I know. Why? Like they're very steamy and so but steamy. like over like the scenes themselves are very very steamy but there's enough like overall storyline that that's why the steam up all comes down to the three because it's mm -hmm. not there are little snippets of like really intense really hot hot steaminess <laughs> but then like you get all the the mix of like the suspense and the thriller and all of that but I, yeah. I, and I also like the fact that she uses the serial killer theme through each book. Like it's a different serial killer for each book, but she focuses on a serial killer, which I, it's very different than any other romance I've read also. Yes. And when I first started getting back into reading in my early twenties, I was only reading thrillers and I oh, like, really? was obsessed with like serial killers. I don't know. <laughs> weird obsession I know and that's like right when all the stuff all the serial killer shows are like coming out on Netflix and all that mm -hmm. stuff so then I got into reading romance and started reading more romantic suspense and I picked up this series and I was like oh this is like perfect well Heather my, like my interest I guess well and Heather Minnesota hockey mom was we were talking about it and she said it really like pulls because she really likes true crime documentaries and true crime like podcasts and she's like it feeds both like I get my romance and I get my true crime exactly like you feel like like these serial killers this is going to sound wrong but these serial killers would be like good serial killers <laughs> like if they were like there's no good serial killers but you know what I mean like interesting they're they interesting seem, they seem like they could be real because yes. because of the way she's written them and yes. like the way that they the, everything plays out yes i understand it, what it you just mean. feels very real it it does like it gives it gives a realness and honestly like if i didn't feel so like safe and content in my little town then i would same i would lock my doors while i was reading this book <laughs> i completely agree so did you like this book Yes, I love this book. Uh, I think each book in this series just keeps getting better and better. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I, I loved it. I really like this too. Like this is my third, my third read by Kennedy Mitchell. Cause like I said, I couldn't read this one without reading the other two. And now I'm officially going down the rabbit hole of Kennedy Mitchell's backlist. So it's all your fault because you're like, get this book. Yeah, I was like, this would be perfect for the podcast. It and would. then you hadn't read it. And I was like, okay, even, even better. better. <laughs> so who would typically like this book? I would say, you know, any romantic suspense fan, I think that this would be right in their wheelhouse. And then really anyone who likes thrillers, mm -hmm. because there are steamy scenes, but at the heart of it, I, it's a thriller in my book. Yeah. I, I agree. Like, I feel like it's almost more thriller than suspense. Like you get the romance, mm -hmm. like sprinkled in, but it's, it's definitely more thriller than suspense, but you get the suspense too, because I mean, there has to be suspense in a thriller. Right. Because you still have no idea what's to come mm -mm. whatsoever, but yeah. No, like she, she does good suspense. So, it's so good. I mean, this is kind of a, a silly question to ask for this specific book, but would you recommend this book? I would definitely, without a doubt, recommend this book and, and have, this series. Yes, um, I would absolutely recommend it to other people. Um, I haven't, like I said, I have not read a series like this at all. And I loved, loved like how different it was from anything else that I've read. Yes, I feel the same way because like we talked about earlier, I think a lot of romantic suspense series, they're they're not the same by any means, but, but they're they have a formula. They do. And they're fairly similar, like type of hero, you know, the ex-military, current military, mm -hmm. that kind of thing, which I love. Yes. I love that. But they're typically not trying to solve a crime. Mm -hmm. I think that's what's so interesting about these books is 
Mm -hmm. Other romantic suspense, yeah, they have an external factor of some sort, and they're trying to like it's, prevent. They're it's trying not the to main prevent focus. the bad thing. Yeah, they're trying to prevent the bad thing from happening. Mm -hmm. Like once they find out, but it's not the main focus. It's not the catalyst for right. the entire story. Yeah, like this one, like the romance is almost like the secondary storyline in these ones. Like the the whole like thriller storyline over it doesn't overshadow it, but it is at the forefront of the book and the romance is secondary. It is still very important and very much a part of the story. So you mm -hmm. you get that happily ever after. You get that like nice extended like after the fact epilogue where you see them in the future, but you don't but it, the thriller is definitely the over, over, um, I can't think of the word I want to use. It is the, you know, arching. No, the, the primary, primary. <laughs> I would not the have. Primary that. part. Yeah, that was, that was a bad one. <laughs> but that's like the, the important part of the story. Like the thriller is the basis of the story and the romance is secondary, but it's, but it's still very important. Yeah. It's still very much a romance and you mm -hmm. get the steamy scenes and you get like you said, you get a very satisfying happily ever after. But yes. yeah, the thriller piece is a huge part of the story and it's mm -hmm. by no means secondary like it is in some other romantic suspense novels. Yes. So I definitely cannot wait to read more from her. But thank you so much, Rachel, for joining me on this quick shot of romance. Yes, thanks for having me. All right, bye everybody. Find us on Instagram at Buzzing About Romance or on Twitter at Buzzing Romance. If you like the podcast, please leave a review. If you'd like to support us directly, join the Bookcase and Coffee Patreon and receive exclusive content only available to Patreon members. Check out bookcaseandcoffee.com for our on-the-shelf show notes.